right, what's going on everybody? Uh, it's Andrew here. I am the proud owner of the 2012 Lexus ISF. And um, you've probably seen many of my videos. Um, I'm on Instagram on, at uh, IS Faster. I also just recently created a YouTube channel to uh, appease the, uh, the people. A lot of people were asking me to uh, make a YouTube channel so that they could, you know, share the videos that they saw on Instagram a little bit easier with folks that didn't have it. And uh, kind of a personal challenge to myself too, I kind of wanted to see how the channel would do. And, um, you know, I've had the channel for about, oh, not even, maybe 10 days, 10 or 11 days so far, and uh, uploaded, I want to say, 63 videos of my uh, races, and uh, response has been pretty good, um, you know, a couple thousand views, I think I checked a little bit earlier, I have maybe 7,500 views so far, which, uh, you know, I'm pleased with, that's pretty good, um, nothing's gone viral yet or anything, but, uh, Hey, we'll have to continue to see uh, how that channel can grow. But I'm getting on here today because um, I'm actually headed down to do more 8th mile drag racing. Um, it's Friday night. Uh, it's a fun activity. It's what I do. Uh, a couple other things that I do with my car is road courses and uh, did, some, did do some roll racing events when that was still happening. But unfortunately that closed down. But I mostly do this uh, eighth mile drag racing down in uh, San Diego. It's at the SDCCU Stadium, form formerly known as Qualcomm Stadium, and it's ran by a company called uh, Race Legal. You can get their information, you know, dates, requirements, and things at racelegal.com. And uh, it's good. It's good fun. I've been doing this for. <clears throat> I've owned the car for maybe uh, oh two years and two months or so, and. I've been drag racing it for just about two years, I want to say. I'd have to look at some uh, some of my old video to kind of figure out what my what my first drag racing was. And uh, been doing it on and off, you know, here and there. Uh, doing it a bit, a bit more lately as uh, more Fs have been um, have been participating. So that's always fun. Uh, glad to always see those guys that roll from uh, Orange County, LA area and a uh, few, uh, few Fs that are in the San Diego area coming in and uh, racing is important. Uh, I wanna say a month ago, there were, I think 14, 15 RCF, GSFs, IFSFs all down there racing. And I'm sorry, not all racing, but uh, probably at least half of us were racing. Um, and I'm, I'm actually making this video to kind of show people, you know, what the, uh, you know, what happens when you go to a legal drag racing event, um, kind of what they do, what they check, uh, what I do personally um, to kind of prep my car for it, uh, and also just have more uh, more videos of uh, other than just beating cars. Um, it's a pretty good, um, pretty good operation they had there. They run this race legal, I'd say, twice a month, or so, yeah, about twice a month, um, and it's, uh, they start at 5 and end at 11, and from what, from, my, from what I understand, they've been down there for, I don't know, since like 2000, somewhere in the early 2000s, so they've been doing it for a while, and, um, you know, it's kind of, I mean, it's, it's, it, why I like it is because of the number of runs you can get. Um, my record there is 38 runs in a night. I don't know any other track in Southern California that you are going to do that at. I, definitely not Auto Club Speedway. Um, that is that is a quarter mile because I've gone there uh, a few times and I've waited 45 minutes to an hour. Uh, I have gone on Saturdays. Though I do know that they have opened up, um, they, they, they do Wednesday, Wednesday night uh, tracks, and I saw the calendar, and they're doing it, I think, almost every single week during the summertime, so if you do like the quarter mile, and you're closer there, um, I'd recommend checking that out. 
I have heard from a couple of my friends um, and family members that do race there that um, they do get a lot more runs in on Wednesday nights and that the lines aren't as bad. So I'm going to have to check that out this summer um, and then, you know, report back. Um, going back to Qualcomm here, they, uh, they charge you, it's $30 to race, um, $10 to watch. And it's just a, it's, it's just a parking lot drag strip. It's not, you know, a real drag strip per se. Um, they have the lights. You know, everything is just as official as it is anywhere else. Uh, but you know, it's not. You don't have the real, truly prepped um, uh, launch area or anything. And uh, it's actually not the greatest. It's uh, there's actually, and what's good, they they run two tracks there. Um, which I do like. They do have a slick. They have a slick side, and they have a street tire side. But they'll let you know if the slick side slick side isn't being used as much. They'll let the, the street tires run right over there. That's usually uh, the left side is usually where like the um, bigger horsepower cars are running. Um, but it does have a little bit better grip, so I will get my best launches um, from there because they do a little bit of a prep to it. The other side. Um, you might as well just stop on the freeway and drag race somewhere because that's about as good as you can prep it is because it's a, a concrete slab is what you're launching on. <coughs> um, um, let's see, what what else can I say about it? Um, tech usually isn't too bad. Uh, um, kind of depends on the person you get, how quickly they'll check you and uh, you, what cars are in front of you, you know, what mods they have. But... Um, goes pretty pretty cool easily they do have a helmet rental guy there that i think it's 20 bucks to rent a helmet and uh, yeah i mean it's a pretty smooth operation but i will take some videos to kind of show you, you know, this is what we this is what happens next and uh hopefully i'll see some of you all out here racing that'd be fun to uh meet some of uh, some new people and um Someone might ask, what don't you like about it? I guess what I don't like about it is sometimes, actually not sometimes, it seems like almost every time, uh, the past couple times, the uh, past maybe four or five times that I've been, they'll close down one of the um, one of the sides at around 9 o'clock, and it annoys me because I ask him, you know, what, why are you closing the side down. Oh, people have to go on lunch break. Okay, fine. Uh, you know, I, I get that. People have to eat. You know, they are open from 5 to 11, so, and they have you know, clean up and, you know, uh, prep and everything, so I understand the lunch break, but I, I really wish that they could stagger maybe people's setup times or something to keep that side open, because without that side open, it kind of takes away the good and the reason why I go down there because the line will just start to back up and I guess what annoys me the most is that they do it at nine o'clock which is peak time if you show up at five o'clock six o'clock even maybe at seven o'clock on some nights you can go you just hot lap it boom 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 you're 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 not waiting more than maybe two or three cars ahead of you to uh to race if that but you know at nine o'clock, people have gotten out of work, they've gone to dinner, they've driven there, and it starts picking up, and they decide that that is the, that is the time that they're going to shut down one of, the, one of the lanes, and they'll shut it down anywhere from maybe 35, 40 minutes, all the way to last time, which really uh, hurt me, it was an hour and a half they shut it down, um, which I don't understand why they had to shut it down for that long, but that's neither here nor there, but that would be my one um, main gripe with uh, with the setup there, is that the, please, do not, shut it down at 7, shut it down at 6, shut, you know, do whatever you need to do, do not shut it down at the peak time when everybody is trying to get runs in, and please, do not shut it down for an hour and a half. Um, I don't know where people are going to lunch, but there is a, the, the 
Boy Scouts are there grilling hot dogs every week, and um, you can easily get a quick lunch in right there. Um, so let me get off my uh, high horse now and uh, go back to um, just talking about the, the place. Other than that, it's pretty good. Um, they have you know, bathrooms there. They give you time slips. Um, they, uh, the, like I said, the Boy Scouts are there. So if you are getting hungry, you can um, you can grab grab some food from them there. Um, what else do I like about it? I uh, I do like the fact that when you come down, you race, then you turn around and come back down the line, the crowd is right here, right next to you. Um, you know, I've high-fived kids, you know, kids, I like your car, your car's so cool, this, that, and the other, and that's pretty, that's pretty awesome that the crowd is right there, you know, you get that kind of interaction uh, with them, hear what they say. Um, some of my favorite things that people have said to me or I've overheard are, kind of Lexus is that? What is that guy running? Uh, is there a V8 in there? Uh, one group of guys told me to stop beating up on everybody so bad and give them a chance. <laughs> so that all that stuff kind of brings a smile to my face um, and I do enjoy that. Uh, you get kind of like that uh, fan or fan interaction, right? More like a spectator interaction. But uh, I don't know, it makes me feel uh, like I'm a little bit famous or something. And it's always fun when you're rolling down and you uh, just one, and you know, you can uh, hear what people say, you know, good job, good race. Um, <clears throat> going back, that is another thing that I wish that they would do. Um, the way that it's set up there, if you are watching, um, say, the start of the races, it's very hard to see um, the end of the race, to see kind of who won, unless it's just a complete blowout. Um, and there's no official time board or, you know, mile per hour board there. Like, um, or, or even a light indicating who won. Um, so that would be kind of cool if they could incorporate that somehow because um, you, you, you don't know what happened. You just have to just be sitting down on the other end and um, kind of watch it for yourself to see who won. But, and what makes it even harder is there are no stands there. And so everybody's just kind of, you know, just standing on their feet, um, kind of looking around, seeing what they can see. There's no grandstands or... Uh, elevated seating for people to get the entire view of what's going on there. Um, so those are two, or another addition to things that I wish that they had, but oh well. Um, but let me take you, uh, let me cut, let me get off here for a little bit, and then uh, once I get closer to the stadium, I will uh, get back online and uh, show you the next step. So until then, I'll talk to you soon.